Good morning, everyone. And I greet you with an ancient greeting that is just as relevant and as important in our day as it ever was. The Lord be with you. Thank you very much. We welcome you to worship today. We welcome all of you, our guests, our members, all of you. It is an honor to be with you and to worship with you today. And we're continuing in our Summer Psalm Sermon Series. And I want to point something out to you. Last weekend, Pastor Joe took us through Psalm 100. And a big part of his message was to get us thinking about the different reasons that the psalmist finds to praise God. God. Well, today we're in Psalm 33, and there's one more huge reason to praise God in the psalm. So listen for that. Listen for that. And my prayer is that you'll be moved to praise God uh, for the gift of which we'll be speaking today. And speaking of Pastor Joe, he is not here. He is enjoying a well-earned and well-deserved weekend with his family, and that's why uh, he's not with us. So it is time to worship. Would you please rise? We worship in the name of our God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing. Friends, as we gather as God's chosen people together once more, we find ourselves seeking his promised forgiveness as we pray together. Gracious God, we dare to approach with our confession. We ask your gracious help because we have found our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips refuse to name, what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a world of dark regret. Set us free from a past that we cannot change. Open us to the marvelous change of your forgiveness in Jesus Christ, and grant us grace to grow more and more in the likeness and image of our loving and forgiving Savior. Amen. Our Lord Jesus has promised us that the sins that we forgive on earth will also be forgiven in heaven. That's a pretty precious promise, folks. And I rely on that promise today as a called and ordained servant of the word, and I declare to you that in our Lord Jesus Christ, all your sins are forgiven. And you are privileged to share that same forgiveness with all the others in your life. You, 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 you are forgiven and you are free. So live, love, and rejoice in that freedom. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Almighty God, 
You sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace that we may be ready to receive you wherever you appear. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Sheila, please. There's more. All right. Thank you, buddy. Well, hello, Caroline. It's nice, nice to meet you. Oh, fabulous. All right. Wonderful. Thank you for coming up. So in my little bag here of goodies, we are going to talk about all things that help us see better. So sometimes we need to put these on to help me see things. I can read a little better, right? I also have in my bag, let's see if you guys know what this is. Any scientists in the house at all? I'm stuck. Perfect. Do you know what this is? What is this, Sarah? It's a microscope. So we can look in here and we can, it makes little things bigger for me. Okay, I'm just going to set that there. And then, oh, here's another thing that's awesome. What about this guy? What is that? It's a magnifying glass. I use that to see better too, don't I? When things are really little. Sometimes we like to look at bugs. We can see their wings. Now, if any of you, were any of you with me this week at Vacation Bible School? I know you were. Were you here? Perfect. So next year, I bet you'll come with me. So what is this? It's not on its stand. It's a telescope. We used this this week, didn't we? Because we were going to outer space. Yeah. So this, when things are super far away, I need this to kind of help bring it closer so I can see it. You know what, though? Do you, know, do you think God needs all of this? Does he need a telescope, magnifying glass? Maybe he needs some readers. Do you think he needs this to see you? No, he can see us, you're right, because he can see us all the time, can he? God can watch us all the time, and so, so that's good, and some of us think that's good and bad, because you're like, great, he sees me when I'm being a really good person, but you know what, he sees you when I'm being a really bad person too, doesn't he? He sees it all, but you know that that's really a good thing, that he sees it all? Yeah, because he takes all of those sinful things, and he wants to help us get better. He says, I see you as a dear child, I love you, even when you're naughty, I love you, and I want to help you be better. And that's what we're going to learn about in our psalm today, that as God sees us, we want to praise that. Even though sometimes we're like, oh man, God just saw me do that, right? But we want to praise that he does. So, you know how we're going to praise him? We did this at Vacation Bible School. So those of you that were with me, I need your help this morning. Are you ready to help me? And that includes you leaders that are out there too, because I know some of you know this, all right? So we're going to say miraculous mission, because that was how we started. And we're going to say Jesus saves me. Do you remember that one, Louie? You ready? I know you're going to be my buddy and help. So we put our hands up. You ready? Go, miraculous mission. Miraculous Jesus mission. saves me. Jesus saves Good job. We go, that's true. That's, true. That's, God. that's God. Perfect. Let's do it one more time now that you know it. You ready? Miraculous mission. Jesus saves me. That's God. true. That's God. Great job. Let's go ahead and close in prayer. You fold your hands with me, and you can repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Thank you for watching me and seeing everything I do. Help me to always praise you. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for coming up. You can go back to your seats. A reading from the Psalms. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all the children of man. From where he sits enthroned, he looks out on all the inhabitants of the earth, he who fashions the hearts of them all and observes all their deeds. The king is not saved by his great army. 
A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a false hope for salvation, and by its great might it cannot rescue. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love that he may deliver their soul from death and keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. The word of the Lord. Hebrews. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it the people of old received their condemnation. Commendation, excuse me. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended for his righteousness, God commending him by accepting his gifts. And through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. 
By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death, and he was not found because God had taken him. Now before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. Without faith, it is impossible to please him, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this, he condemned the world and became an heir of righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went to live in a land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. By faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age, since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead, were born descendants, as many as the stars of heaven, and as many as the innumerable grains of sand on the seashore. These all died by faith, not having received the promised, but having seen them from afar and greeted them, and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For people who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had the opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. Thank you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus says this, and he says this to you this morning, friends. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Stay dressed for action. Keep your lamps burning. And be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast so that they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline at table, and he will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch or in the third and finds them awake, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready For the Son of Man is coming in an hour you do not expect. The Gospel of the Lord. Uh, Please be seated. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. One of the things about spending a good amount of time in a particular section of Scripture is that it gets the mind and the heart thinking about many different things. And sometimes uh, they're a little bit different than others, at least in my life uh, with uh, my bizarre mind. And this week, Psalm 33, as I hung out with it and hung out in it, uh, really made me think about uh, electronic location tracking electronic location tracking it's a big topic today 
It's a huge topic. Uh, I mean, if someone as technologically challenged as me thinks about it, it's really spread down to the masses. <laughs> I mean, big time. And, and I wanted you to know uh, that when I did a Google search, and I used those words, electronic location tracking, 18,400,000 articles or books or whatever appeared. And I think it's a big topic because people uh, are scared. People are scared that there are uh, others who know exactly where you are through GPS. Uh, there are people who track your dining habits, your spending habits, your driving habits, everything, all your habits. I think there is fear that uh, criminals are among those tracking, not just uh, store owners and not just corporations, but criminals are among those tracking to know where you are and know what you're doing because they want to steal uh, you, your identity, that kind of stuff. Uh, all of that goes into uh, this fear, and it's just what's making it such a big topic. Using today's sermon theme, uh, relentless scrutiny. I think that's what folks are afraid of. The relentless scrutiny that comes in the world in which we live, in the world that technology is making for us. And the more I considered it, it really struck me, I don't know that there's anything you can do about it. I really don't. You know, folks are going to follow you. That's just, if you're going to use electronics, folks are going to follow you. And the psalmist was concerned about relentless scrutiny as well. Only, obviously, uh, he or she, uh, the author of Psalm 33, uh, wasn't concerned about electronic uh, security tracking. They were concerned about God's tracking. They were very concerned about that. as a big part of Psalm 33. And uh, as uh, we think about it, that's still a concern of some folks today. It really is. And it's seen as a bad thing. That God might know everything you do. And I think some folks, they have a vision of God. Uh, they put it into the, uh, the Christmas song. This one's not in the hymnal, folks, but I, I bet you know it. Okay, Santa Claus is coming to town. Anyone? He's making a list, checking it twice, going to find out who's. Oh, yeah, you all knew that one, didn't you? You all knew that one. He's going to find out who's naughty or nice. And that's how God is viewed. And they think, if God's looking, I better be nice. That might get me a few extra blessings. Or I better not be naughty, because that might get me a few less blessings and a few less gifts. But folks, the psalmist assures you today, Psalm 33, that Hunter read so wonderfully for us before, he talks about who God sees. Listen to the words that are used. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all the children of man. From where he sits enthroned, he looks on all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all and observes their deeds. Did you catch the three halls? God sees. God sees. Yeah, God sees you always. And God sees you all. And he wants you to know something today. That's a good thing. That's a good, good thing. And not just when you're in a place where you want him to see you. If I had a big mirror, I'd show you where that is. <laughs> Sunday morning in church, you want God to see you here. But God sees you everywhere. And that's a good thing. Because his relentless scrutiny has changed to a loving gaze. And that is all found in Christ. Let me keep going. Because of that, our local concerns really don't matter. 
Because after he talks about how God observes all, the king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a false hope for salvation and by its great might it cannot rescue. Put yourself in there. I don't know if you're a king with a great army, but you might think there are things that make you better than anyone else. The wealthy are not saved by their great wealth. Neither are the poor saved by their poverty. The healthy are not saved by their great health. Neither are the sick saved by their illnesses. Folks, it's all in what God has done for us in Christ. And what God has done for us in Christ is he has made us his children. He has taken our sins upon himself. He has claimed us and called us as his own. He did it again here last night. Little boy named Bo. That's B-E-A-U. Little boy named Bo was claimed right here in our sanctuary by Almighty God. He was joined to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ right back there. So have you been. And because of that, God looks at you. He sees you. He knows you. He loves you. He protects you. He cares for you. Best way to put it, friends, he pays attention to you. He pays attention to you. And this great God of the universe also invites you to pay attention to him. There was a French philosopher of the last century. Her name was Simone Weil. And she made a statement that is powerful. Attention is the beginning of devotion. Attention is the beginning of devotion. God pays attention to you. Do you pay attention to him? Do you pay attention to this God who watches you? Do you pay attention to him? It's an amazing thing. You don't need electronic tracking devices. He already tells you where he is. He's right where he's always been. This morning he will be in the meal. He is in the word that is proclaimed. He is in the spirit that is within you and lives within you. He even invites you to participate in his mission. He even invites you to participate in the inner life of God because it is Christ in you that is the hope of glory. Do you pay attention to that? Do you pay attention to the God who pays attention to you? And God has a lot of competition doesn't he, in our world? He has a lot of competition for your attention. We have our sinful flesh. We have a culture that doesn't want us to pay attention to God. We have the devil himself unleashing his venom against us. We have all those things that get in the way. But back to this. The king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a false hope for salvation, and by its great might it cannot rescue. Behold! Behold! The eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those whose hope, who hope in his steadfast love that he may deliver their soul from death and keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. 
For he is our help and our shield, for our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us even as we hope in you. Pay attention. That's what God's saying. Pay attention. And when you don't, here's the prayer. Lord, have mercy. And by the way, that's a daily prayer for the people of God. That is a daily prayer, a constant prayer, and always prayer. Because he calls us to pay attention. Because he's paying attention to you. Isn't that something? And it's a good thing. So I want to ask you a question back to the beginning of worship today. I invited you to pay attention for another reason to praise God. Do you think the fact that he pays attention to you is a reason to praise God? Wow. Okay, <laughs> and some of you younger people understand, if this was confirmation class, what would I do, Hunter? I'd get my stool out, and I'd sit here and wait you out. <laughs> Folks, is that a reason to praise God? Yes. Thank you, because either that or you weren't paying attention. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. So praise God for it. Praise God for that gift. He's watching. He's watching. And not like the popular song, he's not watching from a distance. He's watching from up close and personal. Because he's your God. And you're his child. Have a blessed week. Knowing that you're being paid attention to. And that you can pay attention back. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's rise. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's stay standing for prayer. Thank you, Jonathan. Treasuring your promise to hear us when we call, we pray for the church, for those in need, and for all of your creation. Lord God, bless and send your church from each place of worship, especially Christ Lutheran in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and Bethlehem Lutheran Church in Columbus, Georgia, to be a light to the nations. Bless the newly baptized, Bo Charles Munn, the children of our Vacation Bible School, and all believers who set out in faith. Equip us to share our hope in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless children and families as they prepare to return to school and to Sunday school. Encourage all who plan for and participate in the upcoming Sunday school year. Thanksgiving for a great week of Vacation Bible School and for wonderful volunteers. Fill the hearts of all with joy and our lives with praise as we live under your watchful eye. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless and comfort those in need, especially the Evangelical Church in Kenya, as they preach the gospel and supply clean water, provide shelter to those without homes, food for those who hunger, companionship to those who are lonely, and health to the sick, especially those who name before you now, silently or aloud.
Be their help and their shield, Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Keep in your care all who grieve, especially Dixie Buxler, Jeanette Roji, and Annette Schoberg. Hold safe in your arms of mercy the faithful loved ones who have died in Christ until we join them in the everlasting city, whose architect and builder is God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. All these things and more we ask in the name of our risen Lord, Jesus Christ, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. We continue to worship as we engage in our offering of generosity. Mia, come on up. Our confirmation essay theme this year, which we continue hearing from our uh, confirmands about today, is Real Present God. Uh, that means he watches, he listens, he's here. And this morning, we hear from Mia Mettler. Mia, good morning, welcome. God is my refuge and strength. I know this because I can go to God for anything and he will listen and help me get through it. God wants us all to be patient and trust him with anything and everything. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. P plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and future. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. In this verse, we learn that we can rely on God and that he has a plan for everyone, even you. Why is there trouble in this world? I believe that God gives us challenges in life to grow within ourselves in our relationship with the Lord. God wouldn't give us these challenges we face if he didn't think we could handle it because he is always with us through everything. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear through the earth, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and, form, and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. Psalm 46, verse one through three. Jesus is a real present God. I know this because we can see his work on the things and the people around us. I even have experienced God working in my life. When I was about a year old, my family and I went to the park <laughs> And on this particular day, it was quite windy, and my dad parked on a hill. My sister couldn't wait for my mom to finish doing something with my brother, so, so my sister and my dad left and walked down the hill to the park. By the time my mom was almost done with my brother, she put me in the stroller. Moments later, a huge gust of wind came by and pushed me in the stroller all the way down the hill. I don't remember this, but my mom told me the stroller totally flipped. I got a big scrape on my nose, but it could have been worse. Now that, now that I really think about it, I really believe God was there and stopped what happened before it really got bad. You never know, I could have been really hurt besides the big scrape on my nose. The, the real present God can restore what is broken and make it into something life-changing. I believe God is always with us and he knows what is happening in the world around us and helps us. Even when you don't know it, God is with you every step of the way. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe in also me. John chapter 14, verse one. This verse says, do not focus on the things in life that are bringing you down or making your life troubled. Trust in God because he is the strength that will help you push through. God is like your best friend and he's always there for you through the ups and downs, like, just like a best friend would be. Merciful God, you open wide your hand and satisfy the need of every living thing. You have set this feast before us. Open our hands to receive it. Open our hearts to embrace it. Open our lives to live it. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places 
offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending Christ, on the same night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Thank you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. The peace of the Lord. Friends, this is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. He's paying attention. He is, by coming to you, to forgive you, to strengthen you, to encourage you, to go with you. He's paying attention to you. Come, pay attention to him, and receive the gift of himself. Everything's ready. Please be seated.
news, rise. The true body and true blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you, keep you, and lift you up body and soul unto life everlasting. Go in his peace and in his joy. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Wise and generous God, we thank you that at this holy table you have fed us again with the food of everlasting life. Send us with your blessing to seek the good of our neighbor and call others to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Yeah, could you take that for me, please? One invitation uh, for you to mark your calendars coming up Sunday, uh, Saturday, September 7th. Uh, I join with our prayer ministry team in inviting you uh, to a, the beautiful Savior prayer walk. Now, it's not walking together. It's at your own pace. But it's walking around in the uh, campus here and praying for all the various areas of Beautiful Savior's ministry uh, and Beautiful Savior's influence. And that's between the hours of 7 a.m. and 1 p.m. on Saturday, September 7th, as we prepare to kick off the new ministry year with Rally Weekend on the 7th and 8th of September. And there are folks uh, in the gathering space just to the left of the main doors uh, who would love to answer any questions you have about a prayer walk and uh, invite you uh, to make it a part of your weekend, that weekend of September 7th and 8th. So please, uh, check that out and take care of that. Okay, one more thing to do today, and that's receive the name of the Lord. And when you receive this, right from Numbers chapter 6, uh, remember, he's paying attention to you. This is, part of the, this is part of the package of God paying attention to you because he said to Aaron, Moses' brother, bless the people with these words, and when you put my name on them, I will bless them. I'll pay attention to them. And you can be assured that God in Christ is paying attention to you with a loving gaze. Receive it. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. sends us forth to serve.